Everyone is delighted anytime they find a morel in the woods. It's not easy and they don't just grow everywhere. A lot of people have searched for years and never found one. So when they actually do find a morel, they're really, really tickled about it. Early settlers found out about the morels coming up in the spring and you know, it was just one of those things that people would eat. You know, if you're a pioneer and you're living around here and you're looking for some, some kind of food in the springtime, you're gonna find stuff like poke salad and morels coming up. And uh, all the, uh, the old folks here in Arkansas called the morels dry land fish. And they'd take them and, and fry them up just like fish. And uh, that's just persisted. All your, all your country folks that live here in Arkansas all know about morels. And you know, it's just a folk knowledge that's been passed down year after year for generations. Plus, morels are excellent. They're really good to eat. The same people that hunt and fish Arkansas for decades have been picking morels for decades. Um, there's families that grow here. My, my family goes back in Arkansas over six generations. And uh, I've, got, uh, I've got folks that are buried in the cemetery over here close by that were uh, alive in the 1800s and they, they lived here as settlers. But I mean, you know, anybody that's grown up in Arkansas their whole lives have, have uh, picked morels. My first name is Jeffrey Pitts, but uh, I go by my middle name, which is Jay. About 41 years ago, when I lived here in Madison County, I found my first morels in the early 80s. And uh, I didn't know anything about uh, edible mushrooms at all. And uh, one spring, uh, we lived up here and, and uh, there was these little funny little mushrooms popping up all over our yard mm -hmm. and uh, we were curious about them and, and they seemed to be everywhere so we gathered some of them up and I, I believe my mom took them to church and talked to some of the old folks at the church and they said oh yeah you got dry land fish and so uh, we you know started asking people about them and then pretty soon we found out they were called morels and that put me on the journey of learning and, and picking uh, edible mushrooms. So I, I kind of specialize in uh, edible wild mushrooms. And I like to pick and, and uh, forage edible wild mushrooms year round. I'm an Arkansas Master Naturalist with the Northwest Arkansas Master Naturalist in Benton County. That's the chapter that I belong to. We have a huge club of people up here and uh, we just like to teach about uh, conservation and ecology and we volunteer our time uh, quite often to educate the public and to go out and do stuff like uh, stream monitoring and removing of invasive species and planting uh, native plants and trees and stuff like that. Uh, we're, we're all just conservationists that volunteer our time and uh, we're certified each year through a, a state program called Ar Arkansas Master Naturalist. And I also belong to the Arkansas Mycological Society and the North American uh, Mycological Association. You never know where a morel is gonna wanna grow. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they'll pop up one year and be all over the place and then they could skip a year or two or even more than that. Uh, there's something that stimulates them to pop up their fruit and make, make their uh, spores. And we don't really know for a fact what those stimuli are. So, Just yet. Yeah, nobody really knows. So it, that's what part of the mysterious part about morels. They can pop up and grow at any time and we don't know if they're gonna be there every year or skip a year. Mycelium is uh, microscopic and it happens underground. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the growth happens in a short window of time uh, and and uh, so, you know, to be able to do it, what you're gonna have to do is identify a host tree, dig up some of its roots, and then look at that under a microscope and see what's happening in there. You can study mycelium on roots without disturbing the tree or the greater mycelial pad. There's not very many mycologists in the world. Uh, mycological sciences are a small science and there's not very many people doing it. Not much funding for it. A lot of people aren't aware of the, the morel uh, relationship with host trees, but uh, many people who are savvy about picking morels learn it automatically, just, just from trial and error. They, they see, you know, sycamore trees in the creek 
valley and there's always morels under the sycamores and they they you know just put two and two together and you're like oh under these sycamore trees there's morels we have um several trees that are good morel hosts and the best ones are ash and sycamore elm uh, cedar and also wild cherry the the wild cherries uh, will often have black morels under them and that's a, a different species than the yellow morel that we find we've got four different species of morels in arkansas but the most the two that are the most sought after are the big yellow morels and the uh, black morels uh, we have a miniature species that doesn't get very big but there's a whole lot of them usually and then we have a weird little uh, dark colored morel that's called a half free and uh, that just means that its cap is only attached halfway to the stem up inside so it like hangs down like a skirt but there's those are the four species of morels we have but the the one that everybody wants is the big yellows well arkansas is a good environment for mushrooms because we have a lot of wild lands and and uh, many many mushrooms are dependent on trees and forests so the more uh, wild areas and green spaces that you have, the, the more wild mushrooms you can have. Um, so, you know, forested states have a lot more mushrooms than like states with like plains, you know, where there's not as many trees. And what's unique about Arkansas morel hunting? In Arkansas, morel hunting is kind of difficult because of our Ozark Mountains. You were a lot of up and down. <laughs> So uh, you can find morels in the highest parts of the Ozarks up on top of the mountains. Uh, and you can find them on the sides of the mountains and in the bottoms. Anywhere you find the morel host tree, you can find morels. And in the early spring, uh, the, as the ground warms up, of course it warms in the south first and slowly moves north. And uh, I'll start my season hunting around the Arkansas River Valley. And then as the season progresses, I slowly move into higher elevations in the Ozarks. And here in Arkansas, um, our mushrooms are kind of, uh, you know, they're real dependent on the rain. And once it starts getting hot and we don't have much rain, then the, the, the mushrooms can suffer after that. So it's real rain dependent. We have a rainy year, we have a lot of mushrooms. If we have a dry year, not so much. If we go back and look at last year, uh, we had a late uh, warm up in the spring and a lot of rain. So uh, we actually didn't have morel mushrooms coming up until the very end of March. And we were able to pick morels all through April and right up to the first week of May is when it finally ended because it stayed cool. It was really cool and wet last year. This year, uh, unfortunately, what happened was the, the ground warmed up early in the last week of February and the mushrooms began to grow then. And uh, then we had some freezes, really bad freezes and a warm up and a freeze. And that tends to make the morel uh, season real sporadic. You get mushrooms that do survive the freeze, they continue to grow. And then later, later on, when it warms up again, you get new growth. It just affects the way they grow. And, and we're not having as many mushrooms this year. Uh, and I think that the season may end well before May. It is quick. It's a, it's a four to five week uh, thing and it's over. Wow. And that's just for the morels. There, there are other mushrooms, but nobody's as crazy about the other mushrooms as they all are about finding morels. Every mushroom has its season and the, in the springtime, uh, the first mushrooms that start coming up, uh, there's only a few. And so you're not gonna encounter very many mushrooms in the field right now. You can use the trees as an indicator when morels are up. When these uh, red buds that are behind me here start to bloom and start to open up, then you can expect that the morels are be just beginning to grow. Like I go out and look for black morels when the red buds first start blooming. But when the dogwoods are open up and big, then you're going to be finding big yellow morels. This right here is a uh, wild cherry tree and uh, they'll be the first ones in the spring to get their leaves. That's an easy way to identify. Um, their upper branches are a smooth kind of a silvery gray and then the lower the, the bark down low 
is uh, silvery and black under, underneath. I find black morels under the wild cherry trees. The, identifying the trees is a, the true art of morel hunting. Uh, right here we have sycamore trees. Um, they're really easy to identify by the tops where they're really white. They have a, a, a white limb with the shaggy bark up high and those little balls that you see hanging on the trees are their seeds. They have these big giant leaves down below. But these trees right here in the past have produced morels all along this uh, walkway and out into the uh, grass out there. That one is a nice big mature ash. You can identify them by their bark pattern. If you look at the bark on an ash tree, they have a specific pattern of like X's or little diamonds, but it's a real thick bark. And this is one of the best morel trees. Right over here is a young morel growing. A young morel, it's still in the baby growth. Um, the top of it was actually kind of uh, hurt right there by frostbite. Uh, when they get frostbite on them, it will kill the top and it'll make it real hard and crispy and it won't expand as, as well right there. Um, so the mushroom's trying to expand and release its spores, but the frostbite will get the top of it and make it where it can't expand. And that one, it looks like it just broke off the top part that, that got frostbite. Um, about three to four weeks. Yeah, most people don't understand that. A lot of people think that morels pop up full sized overnight or after a rain and they don't. They pop up small and they grow really slowly for about three to four weeks. If you pick morels young before their caps have expanded, you are limiting their reproductive possibilities because they can't really release all of those spores while the cap is really small and wrinkled up and super compact. They're not releasing those spores. It needs to really expand and then the heat and the sunlight will make those spores come out in the billions. Uh, the spores are microscopic and they float on the wind like smoke. So um, they're not doing that when they're a little gray baby. They're still trying to get to the point where they can do that. If you pick all of your little gray morels in your spot, you just took all of their spores away and they're not gonna be able to, to reproduce in that, in that way. Spores are a, a clone of the adult and that's asexual reproduction and then a spore will land and it'll turn into a strand of mycelium that we call a hyphae. And those hyphae go underground and start eating and they look for another hyphae. And where they cross, then they, they can mate sexually and that's a, uh, that's a reproduction where they trade genetics. So that's um, how you get your outcrosses and stuff like that. So they can reproduce themselves in the ground uh, asexually by budding and, and splitting themselves, but they, they want to put out spores that fly away and go find other morels in other places and, and sexually reproduce and share their genetics. It's super complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so this is good morel habitat right here. Cedars are a known morel host and I always find morels in the cedar trees every year. The ground is all covered with this moss and it shows you that it's moist enough and it's protected from the sun. So when morels come up in here, they grow well and they, they don't tend to dry out as bad, you know, because it's shady and moist in here. Uh, and sometimes morels will be later in the season in a cedar grove like this. So you can go, you know, toward the end of, uh, of April find a bunch of yellows up in a cedar grove just like this. I always pick several out of cedar groves every year. The, it's rain dependent, right? And uh, all, all mushroom hunters pray for rain. And this week we need rain and we don't seem to be getting it and it's warming up fast. So what that means is a warm wind and sunshine is gonna dry up the young morels that are trying to grow big and expand. If it would be rainy and cloudy, they would continue to get bigger and bigger. A, a morel pops up out of the ground as a really small little thing, and it grows slowly for several weeks, and it just expands by having water pumped into it. If we don't get the rain, it can't pump in the water, and it just dries out, so they don't get very big. And once, once the ground temperature reaches into the 60s, 
they quit making babies, so there's no more popping up. So what we've got out in the woods now, there are babies and there are adults and they are trying to grow, but if we don't get any more rain, they're just going to dry up and it's gonna be over with within a week or two. It, it doesn't affect how long the season is, it, what it affects is when it starts and ends. So uh, historically, uh, morel season was always in April. Like the morels would come up the 1st of April They'd be in the woods all April long and then end the 1st of May. But um, within the last 15 years, maybe the spring has been pushed back further into March. And then we have years like this where the, the soil temperature reaches the right uh, uh, temperature or in the last week of February. And that just makes things, you know, a lot more complicated for the mushrooms to grow in. It, it is a changing uh, environment and a, and a changing uh, time frame, but the, the morel season will still be the same as long as it doesn't get real hot real fast. If it gets real hot real fast, the season's super short. If it warms up and you know slowly and it's wet, then the season can be long. You're not allowed to take anything out of a state park, so state parks are strictly uh, off limits. Um, but uh, historically in Arkansas, uh, folks have been able to pick morels in the national forest and uh, it's, it's been okay. There's not really any hard and fast laws about mushroom picking in Arkansas. So um, typically, you know, uh, the best place is always private land that you own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the national forests have, have, have historically been a, a place where people can go and pick the morels and the the Forest Service and the Game and Fish don't seem to mind. Mm -hmm. um, morel mushrooms aren't really a true uh, food source for any animals. They're not nutritious for them in that way. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not really, taking you're, you're away not taking that. away anything the animals would eat. And then also uh, when you're removing uh, these mature morels like this, they've already been releasing their spores for a long time and they've done their reproductive thing. Uh, so uh, you can take them and you don't harm the way they grow or anything like that. Uh, ticks. <laughs> ticks in Arkansas are terrible. So yeah, I, I could treat your clothes with permethrin. There's so many tick diseases. Ticks are a danger in Arkansas. Uh, snakes are out this time of year. So watch where you put your hands and feet. There are uh, rattlesnakes and uh, copperheads in the same places that you're going to find the 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 morels, but uh, you know, it, you, you're you gonna find morels and they're really easy to identify and most everybody can tell you whether or not they're a morel. If you cut it in half, it's gonna be hollow inside. It's gonna have that sponge top. You can tell that's a morel. The there are uh, some things known as false morels. And in North America, we do have some species of false morels that uh, contain a, a toxin known as gyromitrin that can be a, a problem if you eat it. This is Gyromitra caroliniana. This is one of the false morels. But uh, fortunately for Arkansas, the species of Gyromitrin, that, or the species of Gyromitra that carry that, that toxin do not grow in Arkansas. So we have, we have false morels in Arkansas, but all of them are uh, actually safe to eat. In Montana, um, upper Michigan, it's places where they have uh, conifer trees that the, the mushroom associates with, and we don't have those trees in Arkansas, like spruce and fir and stuff like that. Um, it's, a, it's a colder and higher environment, you know, and, and, and the, they call it the montane states, so the states with all the mountains and the, the, um, all the conifer trees, that's where the, the poisonous mor uh, false morels grow. The false morels, are uh, bigger and thicker and red on top and, and uh, they're not hollow like the morels are. But all of our false morels are edible too and a lot of people love to eat them. So, I mean, I eat the false morels every year. The ones that grow in Arkansas are safe. The most common of the false morels are, are big and round on top and, and red. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty easy to tell the difference. A, a, a yellow morel is going to be light colored and anywhere from a brown to a really, really pale yellow. And it's got a, 
a, a cream colored stem a few inches tall and then a much larger tall pointy cap that's a yellow or a brown or a grayish color even sometimes and the cap has lots of little uh, pits in it like a sponge it almost a lot of people that have never seen a morel say oh those little spongy mushrooms because the caps look like sponges and they're going to be growing under certain trees in the woods like i said ash sycamore elms stuff like that uh, and if you have one of those trees in your backyard they can actually grow out into the grass in your yard because their their host tree is nearby but always identify your mushroom before you eat it never eat a wild mushroom that you can't identify there are poisonous mushrooms in arkansas that will kill you they will destroy your liver uh, so, you know, don't just go out in the woods and gather up any mushrooms and eat them. Always have them identified some way or another. There's some great uh, groups on Facebook that people will help you identify your mushrooms. So, um, you know, learn them first and then eat them. The morel mushroom doesn't taste like a mushroom you can buy in the store. Um, it tastes, it's kind of got like a nutty flavor to it or a meatiness. Some people describe it as meaty. The morel mushroom mycelium lives in the tree roots around certain types of trees that are a host tree and they have kind of like a symbiotic relationship. They trade nutrients with the trees and our hardwood trees give them sugars and stuff like that uh, as a trade-off and the fact that they live with the trees and in the forest it gives them a nutty flavor that some other mushrooms don't have. Um, there's, a, there's a, a, an old way of preparing them that most people do is uh, soaking them for a little bit in some salted water uh, because morels have a tiny little uh, hexapod that lives inside them called springtails. And when you get your morels home, if you lay them on the counter, you'll see them jumping around. It's like little specks just jumping everywhere. It's springtailed hexapods. Some people don't like the, the thought of eating those little guys, so they, they'll soak them in some salted water for a little while, try to flush them out. Mm -hmm. I like to just rinse mine really good under running water in the sink. Um, slice them in half, make sure there's not like a bunch of ants or a centipede inside or something like that. Some, some insects will uh, go inside them, make a little home in there. Uh, but uh, you just basically want to clean them and then cook them however you like. You don't necessarily have to soak them in salted water, although that's the folk way of doing it. And I don't recommend soaking them overnight. A lot of people do that too. They tend to be a little too soggy and salty for my taste. Boy, every, every spring everybody expects the, the morels and we fry them up or saute them or whatever. There's so many ways to cook morels. The big ones that are uh, really large, all morels are hollow, so like the big ones, they're perfect for putting a mixture of like cream cheese and crab and, and, and stuff down in there and then bake them, have like a stuffed morel. Oh, um, meats, like a lot of people like them with like steak or pork chops. I have a, a favorite recipe that's uh, uh, more, uh, pork chops with morels and brandy cream sauce. Uh, it's really good, um, but uh, you know the the classic is just fried morels. That's what that's what almost everybody wants to do is just have fried morels. There's several ways to do it. Some people will just like roll them in, in flour and, and fry them in butter. There's a really old classic recipe where you uh, dip them in egg and roll them in crushed uh, saltine crackers and then fry that in butter. Um, or you know a, a good a good uh, batter that you just, you know, the, the liquid kind of batter, those are like a regular fried mushroom. That's great. These have been in my refrigerator for three weeks. So they can, they can keep in a refrigerator inside of a sack, like a paper sack for about three weeks. To keep a, a morel long-term, you can slice them in half and dehydrate them in a dehydrator. And once they're very, very dry, then you can store them in mason jars for a year or more. And you have to reconstitute them uh, when you want to cook with them. Some people do make a living off of mushrooms. Um, there are professional pickers that will go, they, they know the places where they grow the best and how to find them. And they'll go and they'll pick uh, hundreds of pounds of them and sell them. 
and they, uh, you can actually follow the progression of morels from the south where they start, because in February they start growing in Georgia first. Mm -hmm. They'll be in Georgia and Alabama, and uh, I know people from St. Louis and areas like that, that as soon as they see the morels are up down in Georgia, they head down there and they pick a bunch and they bring them home. Um, restaurants will buy them. Uh, anybody will buy them that's a big fan of morels. There's no shortage of people who will buy morels, and people ask me every year to sell them to them. And I always say, well, you know, if I, ha if I find plenty of them, I'll sell you some, but usually I've got way more people wanting to buy them than I have morels to go around. Yeah, they sell for about $50 a pound right now. Um, it's, it's scarce. They're, they're kind of scarce this year, so $50 to $60 a pound is pretty common. Um, you know, with the prices of everything these days going up, it's, it's kind of shot up in the last five years because used to be the common price was about $30 a pound. You can't really uh, successfully grow morels commercially. Um, there's been some people in Europe that have had a breakthrough in the last five years or so to uh, be able to commercially grow some morels uh, in France, I believe but it's eluded mushroom growers over the years and that's because the, the species of morels that taste the best grow in association with trees and plants and you have to have that association. Uh, so indoor growing in the past that has, where people have been successful with morels, that they've grown a, a, a species of morel that grows on dead wood, eats wood chips and stuff like that. Um, so like the, those don't taste as well, but they are easier to grow. And there's a lot of commercial growers in China that grow those kind on dead wood, but um, it's not very easy to grow uh, the, the Eastern yellow morel at all. And nobody's successfully done it in a commercial venture yet. People in the West, uh, after forest fires, they have some different species of morels out there and the, the forest will burn and then all the morels come up and they, they actually have people go out and pick hundreds of pounds of morels out there. And there's buyers that will come out and buy the morels on site and dry them and then ship them to Europe and, and China and places like that. They'll post on our uh, morel hunting group on Facebook, how many morels, I found 245 morels today. Um, and the, you know, that's a pretty good haul. Um, Honestly though, the people that pick the most morels just skip over counting them and start telling you how many pounds they've got. Oh, wow. um, because you can find morels in cer certain locations where you just haul out pounds and pounds. And uh, it's not uncommon to hit a patch of morels where you could take uh, 10 pounds or more per tree uh, in a place where they really grow well. It's a treasure hunt. It's a good, uh, it's a gourmet edible and everybody uh, has their own little honey hole or a morel hunting spot and nobody wants to tell you where it is. <laughs> <laughs>